I pull out a book at random and examine the worn cover. Opening it, I turn to a, a random page and read aloud. Naruto struggled against the chains that Sasuke had bound him. <laughs> wait. Wait, wait, shirtless and what? Wait. Hi guys, and welcome to another episode of Dream Daddy. <laughs> so, last episode we pretty much got, we had a, an awesome party to get to know all the dads a little bit more, and we got to see their kids, which was awesome. And now we have dad book, and I think this is the portion of the game where I get to be selective on which dad I want to get close to and have a very special ending with <laughs> so so i i have a very hard choice i'm actually leaning because i've been giving it some thought um i've been leaning towards damien and surprisingly joseph only because Joseph at the barbecue kind of changed my impression about him and he needs somebody way better than Mary. I'm sorry. I'm gonna make him divorce Mary and let him come to me. <laughs> I will treat him right. <laughs> so I don't know. Like I'm, I'm getting kind of swayed here with Joseph, but I'm, I'm leaning more towards Damien though. So more than likely, I think I'll do Damien first. But I do plan on dating Craig, Matt, and Joseph, and of course Damien. Uh, the first dad, most likely, it's going to be Damien. <laughs> but anyways, let's go ahead and see what our daughter has to say. Wait, what? Oh, Dad Manda. <laughs> That's funny. Hey, hi, Gray. It's me, your dear old friend from way back in the day, Dad Manda. I am delighted to see you've signed up for Dadbook. They've recently added this exciting new messenger service, so you may find yourself receiving messages from other dads like myself. Take care not to miss them. Amanda, is that you? What are you doing on Dadbook? Why, Gray? I never. We've known each other since business school. How could you possibly confuse me for your amazing and talented and easy to buy things for daughter? Though I am, of course, flattered. You should buy Amanda more things. <laughs> Amanda, you know, I didn't go to business school. I barely even managed to get my degree. Wait, no. Wow. <laughs> I didn't say that. You never heard that. This is gold. I was a great student, I swear. I graduated at the top of my class because I worked hard and ate all my vegetables. Totally holding on to this for later. Wait, do you even remember what I majored in? I declined to comment. <laughs> That's funny. Cool. That's hilarious. I love that. That's so funny. Ooh, 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 uh, and they light up uh, in color. Okay, I like, ooh, I like this. I like this a lot. Okay then, um, we we will go with Dave. Hi, Damien. <laughs> ooh, let's check out your profile. How do you do? I have finally decided to join this information super highway. <laughs> I'm not entirely sure how this works, but I will try my best to understand. I love long strolls through graveyards and spending time with my son. If you would ever like to chat about the latest in Victorian fashion, the inevitably of our own demise or black cats, please send me a, a, a letter. On a Friday night, you are most likely to listen to true crime podcasts while I taxidermy my newest specimens. See, that's a little on the weird side for me, but I can overlook that. That's fine. As long as you taxidermy the things away from me, I think we can be okay. <laughs> if you had one thing to take with you onto a desert island, what would it be? A coffin. That's kind of smart, though. That is actually pretty smart, because at least the coffin, you, you can store shit inside. Like, he's, he, he's onto something. <laughs> and you, you have a place to sleep. One easy. What are your turn-ons? Pronouncing bosom? <laughs> Pronouncing bosom correctly? <laughs> That's funny. Well, lucky for you, I can pronounce bosom correctly. <laughs> what did you want to be when you grew up? A bat. 
Low key, I wanted to be a vampire when I grew up, but that didn't happen. <laughs> What's your favorite movie genre? Foreign art house horror. Ooh. What's your ideal dates? It's night. We are at an industrial dark wave club in Berlin. Music drums to beat of our hearts. What? Okay, Damien. You are literally made for my mind is set. I'm going for Damien. <laughs> An upside down cross. Oh, what do you never leave your home without? An, an, an upside down cross. I spend a lot of time thinking about mortality salience. Oh, okay. Can I? Let's. Hi, Damien. Oh, hi, Damien. I'm sold. Yes. Damien seemed really interesting. A little odd, but interesting. I think I should hang out with him to get to know him a little better. <gasps> I navigate to Damien's dad book page and type out a message. <gasps> hey dude, you seem cool. We, we should hang out sometime. I sit here for a minute before I see that Damien's typing. But then he keeps typing and typing. Man, is this guy writing a novel? I leave the computer to make some coffee <laughs> and he's still typing. I sip my coffee and the computer finally dings. Great. <laughs> I must confess my excitement to be receiving your kind letter for, as you see, I do find myself available to enjoy your company. <gasps> oh, I must ask for your forgiveness, however, as I believe our first meeting did not paint me in as gentlemanly manner as I would have liked. Oh, whoa, there's more. I would be highly flattered to enjoy your companionship at my residence for an afternoon tea and a stroll around my garden, should it please you. Till then, adieu. Yours, humbled, D blood march. I stare at the screen and reread the letter several more times. Hey, Amanda! Amanda pops out of her room. Her eyes a, 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 a little puffy, almost as if she'd been crying. Amanda, are you okay? What is going on with you? Hey, are you all right? I'm fine. You you don't sound fine. Oh, yeah, totally. I'm cool. Uh. I just found out that the succulent I've been watering and singing to for the last three months was actually made out of plastic. Even the dirt was fake. Oh, honey. Are you sure that's all you're, you're upset about? Uh. If there's, you know, anything going on, I just want you to know that I'm here for you. And I'll always be here for you. Whether you need a shoulder to cry on or a strong dad to go kick someone's butt, I'm only a phone call away. Thanks, dad. I appreciate that. But I'm fine, really. I'm unconvinced, but I'll stop... I'll stop badgering her about it. I'm sure she'll tell me when she's ready. Can you help me with something? Aww. Dad, for the last time, I'm not popping your back pimples. No, no. Can you... interpret this for me? Ah. Uh. I turned the computer to Amanda and she squints at Damien's message. I just don't understand NetSpeak. Like, is this how you kids communicate with each other now? He literally was clear as day. What don't you get, Gray? The f he was clear as like literal, like crystal ball clear on what he wanted to do. What? <laughs> oh, totally. This is the hot new thing. See, dad, kids got over saying lol and lamau or, or whatever and decided that they, need, they they needed to do was bring it back to the 1800s <laughs> so what do i do hmm. where's your pen and quill what yeah did you forget to unpack the pen and quill dad how will we address the nobleman in regards to your upcoming deb debutant ball okay now i know you're messing with me <laughs> Father, without a proper chaperone, you'll never end up with a suitor worthy of our land. Huh. Or our dowry. <laughs> or... So, you read Pride and Prejudice for school one time, and you're reciting things you know about it back to me, aren't you? Oh. <laughs> like the first five pages. Then I read a review of, of, of the movie. Still gotta be, though. Great. So, what do I say to Damien? <laughs> I got this. Amanda re reaches o over me and types on the keyboard. Sure thing, do. Regards. Right. Great. Amanda hits sun and smiles at me. <laughs> 
<laughs> well, I suppose that's that. Sure thing. Ew, whoa. Ooh, Damien. I like the house decor so far on the outside. Ooh, yes. <laughs> I make the short walk over to Damien's house. Well, I guess you can't really call it a house. It's more of a manor? A state? The gothic architecture looms above the other homes in the cul-de-sac. I walk past a couple of gargoyles guarding the front door and, and, and look around for a doorbell. There doesn't seem to be one. I pull the large, ornately carved bat's head door knocker back and a hollow sound echoes throughout the house as I strike it against the door. I wait several moments before the door slowly creaks open. Damien? It's a little creepy, but I enter the home and take a few steps in into the foyer. Noting the oil portraits of who I assume are dead r relatives hanging on the wall. Oh, damn. As I'm, ad as I'm admiring them, the front door slams shut behind me. H hello? Silence. An oil lamp in the corner flickers dimly, casting ominous shadows against the wall. Why do I feel like all the people in these paintings are staring straight at me? Why is it so cold in here? Where's Damien? Great, pleasure to have you in my home. I look up and see Damien standing at the top of a majestic staircase with a walking candle holder. Oh, he's walking down the steps with the candle hold. Okay, Damien, tonight is the night. I'm ready to be Black Rose Blood March. <laughs> I'm already ready. <laughs> oh God, what's up? What's with the door slamming shut? Uh. Oh, sorry, there was a draft. And the door creaking open when I knocked? <laughs> I accidentally left the door unlocked. And the creepy oil paintings. <laughs> I like oil paintings. Right, <laughs> right. Gray, stop making this awkward. You're, you're hurting his feelings. Uh. Please, let me show you around. Oh, he's so excited. Look at his little smile. Ah. Yes, please, please, please show me around, Damien. Okay. Damien leads me around his house, showcasing his parlor, his sitting room, auxiliary sitting room, and the parlor again for some reason. Oh. This is one of the older homes on the block, yes, but nowhere near as old as the architecture might suggest. Uh. Through extensive renovations, I have been able to craft a residence that is both historically accurate to the Victorian period and equipped with the amenities of any modern dwelling. We walk past a door covered in bumper stickers, caution tape, and a black parade poster. <laughs> Is that his son's room? Did they listen to my chemical romance in the Victorian era? <laughs> oh god. That's my son's room. You know how the rebellious teenage years are. Onward, onward, and there's more to see. Hmm. We reach a door at the end of the hall that Damien opens with, with a flourish. Ah. And this is the library. <gasps> that is actually a pretty nice library. And I like the little specimens of the butterflies on the wall. Ooh, very nice. Ooh, and I like the ooh, fancy sofa. Okay, Damien, so when are we gonna already move on to the next step in our relationship? <laughs> like, I'm already sold. And this is the library. Sunlight streams in from floor to ceiling, arc floor to ceiling arced windows. The walls are lined with packed Bookshelves and even more books are scattered over the period appropriate furniture. Damien is clearly really proud of this room. Um He did say that he likes books, right? I think so. Um Look at the butterflies. I walk up to the glass display of pinned bugs on the wall. It's pretty impressive. <gasps> Ooh, he liked that though. He liked that. Nice bugs. <laughs> I pinned them all myself. Maybe I could show you. Sh maybe I could show you how sometime. You can keep that to yourself, Damien. But I would love to see you do it. <laughs> I'm concerned. I would stick the pin right through my finger. Hmm. Ah, the pinner's gambit. Pinner's gambit. Is that a thing? Hmm. No. 
<laughs> All right, let's uh, pick up the pick up a book. Oh. You know, Gray, in the Victorian era, there was some controversy surrounding reading. Many people thought the more tawdry novels... Many people thought the more tawdry novels would encourage youths into a life of crime and would cause too much of a distraction from work and school. I pull out a book at random and examine the worn cover. Opening it, I turn to a, a random page and read aloud. Naruto struggled against the chains that Sasuke had bound him. <laughs> wait. Wait, wait, shirtless and what? Wait, shirtless and out of breath, he looked up at Sasuke. Sasuke smirked, unbuttoning his ninja. <laughs> Why does he have Naru Sazu Yaoi? <laughs> But can I get that book, though, for research purposes? <laughs> oh my god! Damien! Oh my. Okay, I think that's enough! <laughs> Damien snaps the book shuts and puts it back onto the shelf! That's a rare book from my private collection. Oh, you don't say, Damien. We are going to get along. <laughs> he has a Yaoi collection. I'm sold. Easy pick. I'm sold. Damien, I'm already sold. Look out the window. I walk to the window and am greeted by a beautiful view of Damien's backyard. It showcases a beautiful view of the rest of the cul-de-sac. Hey, I can see Craig on his lawn. He's doing push-ups with his daughters on his back. Damn, he seems, he sees, he sees me and waves happily, doing push-ups with one hand now. Damn. Oh. Did you know that Victorians spend at least 20 hours a week gazing longingly out of full-length windows? Wait, really? Oh. No, but Victorians did appreciate, appreciate telling a good joke. Oh. <laughs> Please, will you join me for tea? Oh, you're so adorable, Damien. Yes, I will join you for tea. Yes. I love how excited he is. It's so cute. I follow Damien to his sitting room, where finger foods have already been set out upon a beautiful tiered silver tray. I take a seat on one of the high back chairs as Damien pours and serves me some tea. I can't believe we're having a high a high tea. I never thought I'd get to do this. Uh -huh. Damien smiles to himself. What? Uh -huh. It's a common misconception that high tea refers to the wealth or class of the people enjoying it, when in fact the high refers to both the later time of the day that the working class had to enjoy tea and the height of the tables on which they're served. Oh. Oh. My dear friend, we're currently enjoy enjoying afternoon tea. That's informative. Yes, he's very knowledgeable, Gray. Yes, I think he's a very prospect candidate for us. Damien takes a seat next to me and serves me a tiny sandwich. <gasps> oh, thank you. Um, I like your cave. <laughs> Let me see. Your home is really impressive, though. Like, it is. Your home is really impressive. Well, were there eggplants? <laughs> I guess he really liked that. <laughs> it seems like you've really put a lot of work in, in, in into this place. Hmm. The, uh, Thank you. No one's ever complimented my home before. Hell, I can barely get matching salt and pepper shakers in my place. And look at what you've done. I'm kind of jealous. Oh. That's very, very generous of you to say. What got you so interested in goth stuff? Oh. Well, when I was a young boy, my father... Did he take you into the city? Into the city? <laughs> when I was... A young boy, my father, took me into the city to see a marching band. <laughs> I love this so much. <laughs> oh, God. Hmm. Sorry? <laughs> Did you guys see a marching band? <laughs> I love this <laughs> Did you guys see a marching band? Hmm. I'm afraid I don't understand. Damien, please, he's fucking with you. <laughs> You're serious. Hmm. Of course. <laughs> but it's, you know, the song. Amanda made me listen to it. <laughs> oh, God, I love this. 
Seriously? Uh -huh. I'd love to see a marching band. What started off as a small hobby of collecting taxidermied animals grew into sort of an obsession. It's a privilege to be able to appreciate the lives and cultures of those who came before us, I think. Why not go all the way? Hmm. I like not dying when I catch a cold. <laughs> he takes a sip of tea. Oh. I can acknowledge that there were many very terrible things about the Victorian area, and to try to live a life that strictly aligns with those ideals would be admittedly horrid oh. but i think it takes a critical mind to truly appreciate something to the fullest to be cognizant of its flaws and love it all the same huh. tell me gray do you have any hobbies oh man i do but i don't know if i care about anything the way you care about this stuff mm. well i'd love to hear about your interests hearing someone talk about the things they're passionate about is intriguing and quite honestly rather attractive oh you don't say damien well we, we already have one thing in common we both enjoy reading the art of Yaoi. <laughs> That's one thing. <laughs> oh. Please do tell me about your hobbies. Quick, sound sophisticated. Um, I learned how to juggle once. I like watching soap making video. I like watching soap making videos on the internet. Soap is uh, an important advancement in modern society, getting rid of germs and stuff. I would say that the people who make soap are the true heroes here. To watch them work is an honor. Hmm. I um tried making some with Amanda once, and we both had to go to the doctor for the rashes, which I guess does sh show that we should leave it to the professionals. We finished our tea and, and finger sandwiches. Uh. Come, I have one more thing to show you. I don't think he liked that response. <laughs> Damien takes me to the back of his home, where a, where a variety of flowers flourish in beautifully landscaped rows. A small stone path weaves through it, and and butterflies flit lazily through the air. This is a pretty-ass garden. Damien, how big is your home? Hmm. My garden. How big is your home, Damien? It's beautiful it is beautiful oh thank you mm. victorians took flowers and floral arrangements very seriously oh. you see it was considered uncouth to discuss personal and romantic relationships in public so lovers and friends alike would use bouquets to send secret m m messages t t to each other each flower and plant is symbolic of different feelings. Huh. Even more interesting is that one flower could mean different things depending on the other plants it was paired with. One had to be extremely careful as even with the style in which the, the ribbon was tied around the bouquet affected the message. Hmm. Damien leans down and plucks a gorgeous bright orange flower off of a vine. Oh. The Lilium bul bulbiferum, the orange lily. What do you think this one means? My loins are ablaze. <laughs> Thou art the Titus. Three cheers for sweet revenge. <laughs> what is up with the MCR <laughs> references? I love it, but damn. You're three, three, three cheers for sweet revenge. Huh. Yes. Yes. Oh. The orange lily is actually symbolic of pure hatred. Oh. Well. Oh. Damn, okay. And that's precisely why floral ar arrangement is so challenging. What's your favorite type of flower? I like... See, snapdragons look nice. Honeysuckles are cute too. Sunflowers? I like sunflowers, but I'm not like, oh my god, sunflowers. Maybe snapdragons, because it sounds cool. Snapdragons, because they're cute. And you can do that thing where you squeeze them so it, it looks like they're talking. What a lovely choice. I'll have, to I, I'll have to remember that when I put together a bouquet for you. Oh, I would love that so much, Damien. Please. He, he would put together a bouquet for me? No one's ever given me a bouquet before. 
I follow Damien down the footpath and admire more of his beautiful flowers. Suddenly, a phone rings. Hmm. Oh, great. Will, will you excuse me? I must take this. He, he pulls the cell phone out, out of his pocket. I'm a little surprised it's not a, a, a rotary phone. Great, he's not going to be that old school. Come on. Go for it. Oh. Damien smiles and walks back to the house. I take a deep breath and enjoy the heavenly perfumed air. What a lovely yard. This makes me wish I had put a little more effort in, into that garden Amanda and I tried to start one time. Our watermelons grew to the size of cherry tomatoes and then immediately died. <laughs> oh. oh, hey, a gargoyle. Oh no, I knocked over the gargoyle. Fix that guard. Gray! Oh shit. I did it! <laughs> oh my god! Oh, that was a close one. Uh oh, here, 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 here comes Damien. He he looks upset. Ugh. Great, my sincerest apologies. I've kept you waiting. There's an urgent matter that I must attend to, so I'm afraid I must take my leave. No problem, dude. E everything all right? <sighs> Damien worries the hem of his coat with his fingers and looks away. Everything is perfectly fine, but I, uh, it's Lucian. What's wrong? <sighs> he appears to have, well, his teacher needs me to come to the school post haste. Do you need help? <sighs> oh no, you, you don't have to. Let me come with you. Us dads gotta stick together. <sighs> You're right. This is one of Lucian's more elaborate stunts. I would greatly treasure having a, 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 another parent by my side. Let's go. Hmm. Hello, hello, uh, teacher. Damien and I walk into the school and are immediately greeted by an anxious looking Hugo. Hmm. Hey, Damien, you're here in record time. Hmm. I wouldn't miss it for the world, dear friend. Wow, whatever it is, it doesn't seem like this is Hugo and Damien's first time to the my kids are in trouble rodeo. Hmm. What is it this time? Oh. This, Damien, you have to see to believe. Damien and I fall fall into step behind Hugo, who leads us through the busy corridors of the school. We pass by several classes in session, and I vaguely wonder if Amanda's around. Hugo eventually ushers us into a small boiler room with a flight of rickety stairs leading down into darkness. Watch your step. I can hear faint voices drifting from the basement, and they don't sound happy. As I'm led into the depths of the school, I recall the antics I got into as an angsty middle schooler. At least I had enough sense to stay out of creepy basements. We find another teacher in a boiler room tucked away in the back of the basement. With him are Lucian and Ernest, Hugo's son. Lucian has a bloody nose. Thanks for coming. I can make heads I can't make heads or tails of this. I look around the scene of the crime and see a bunch of bricks and some masonry tools scattered around. Huh. What happened here? Ernest punched me. Lucian tried to kill me. What? Lucian. The fuck? I was not trying to kill you, dumbass. I was trying to build a brick wall around you and see what would happen. Lucian! You promised me there was wine down here. You tricked me. Uh. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Wait a second. Lucian, did you try to... Cask of Amontillado Ernest? I'm neither confirming nor denying that. I turned to Damien and whispered to him. What's, uh... What's Cask of Amontillado? Cask of Amontillado is a very morbid book. <laughs> it's a ca classic Edgar Allan Poe sh short story where a man gets his enemy drunk, lures him down to his cellar with the promise of wine of a fine vintage, then buries him alive behind a brick wall. Oh. It's a lovely story. So wait, Lucian, you tried to do that to him? I was curious to see how it would turn out. I wasn't actually gonna leave him there. 
what was the thought process here? That Ernest, that Ernest was just going to sit still while you slowly built a tomb around him? Well, it worked for like 20 minutes because he's an idiot, and then he realized that I had lied about the wine. And you were cackling mani maniacally. That's, that sort of tipped me off. Ernest, 20 minutes? Dad, Whoa. it took you 20 minutes? Son, we just did an entire two-week unit on the cask of, of Amontillado, and it took you 20 minutes to realize Lucian was leading you into an elaborate ruse? Did, did, did you even read the story? I read the first five pages and then read a review of the movie. <laughs> Sweet Manchego. It's only five pages long and there is no movie. <laughs> yeah, you're right. I paid Lucian to read it for me. Hmm. Actually, he, he didn't even pay me. So when you think about it, this was me teaching him a lesson. Damien and Hugo both have their heads in their hands. You guys are always telling me to engage in the literature and I did. I don't see a problem here. All right, I'm filing this under what the hell uh, 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 under what the hell? Don't do whatever that was again. You two are both suspended for a week. Ernest and Lucian high five. The teacher starts to stomp up the stairs. Hugo, I'll cover your class. Take your son home. Mr. Bloodmarch, you too. Thank you for your mediation. We all head up the stairs and out of the school in tense silence. Jesus, you need both of you guys, Hugo and... Damien, you guys need to show your kids what the chancla looks like because you just take the slipper out and once you train them enough, they'll, they will fucking lick your toes. <laughs> Lucian, Damien, and I all pile into my car and begin the drive home. Lucian immediately puts his hood up and stares out the window angrily. I'm not going to go to therapy again. Yeah, you see, you need to, like, legit whoop him. That's what you need to do. Therapy is not going to do shit. Hmm. I know, son. It's entirely up to you whether or not you want to go. But I care about you, and I can see that you're struggling. So if you decide that you would like to speak to a professional about your feelings, we can do that, too. Huh. Maybe you can spend this next week looking for a summer job, hmm? I, I, I know how much you, you, you want your own car. I can't believe Damien's keeping his cool. I'm impressed. Fine. Ooh, okay, okay. A gentle, a gentle approach to parenting. I like that, Damien. See, I like... Okay, Damien. Your parenting isn't so bad. You have the gentle touch, but still nudging them to be productive. I like that. Okay. Thanks for not freaking out too hard. Hmm. I love you, son. Can I, like, have Damien now, please? Can I skip the dates? <laughs> uh. Lucian continues staring out of the window. Love you, too. Oh, that's so sweet. We spend the rest of the drive in a relative silence. The moment we pull into the driveway, Lucian hops out of the car, slams the door, and runs inside. Hmm. I didn't expect that conversation in front of you. He and I have a lot we need to work out. It's all right. And all things considered, Lucian's bricklaying was pretty good. So there's your silver lining. Uh -huh. <laughs> there is that, yes. Um, I really admire how you handled that. I really do, yeah. You were a lot more dip diplomatic with him than I would have been. I just want what's best for him. And I don't think yelling at him would do either of us any favors. It rarely does. You're a good dad. Ah! See you around soon? Yes! Oh, he really like. Oh, he loved that. Oh. It would be my honor and pleasure. Damien bows with a flourish. With, with a flourish. Classy. Ooh, classy indeed. Ah! Mm -hmm. I come home to find Damien. Or, er, I come home to find Amanda. <laughs> Give me Davian already! <laughs> God damn it. Ahem. I come home to find Amanda curled up on the couch with a blanket, watching TV. I plop down next to her. Yo. What you watching? Yeah. Tiny House Hunting, Hunting Brothers Extreme Edition. 
Ugh, I hate this show. The couple on screen bickers back and forth while standing in an extremely small house made out of recycled bottles. The tiny house hunting brothers watch them with bemused expressions, both, their, both of their heads touching the low ceiling. I told you I wanted a two bed, two bath, shabby chic cottage. This house doesn't even have a bathroom. But honey, the outside, or honey, the outhouse, the outhouse is only 20 yards away. It's not that bad. I am not pooping outside, Greg. Why don't they just get a regular sized house? Huh? I, I don't know. Hmm? How'd afternoon tea go? <laughs> I mean, yeah, that would solve their problem. It got strange. We had to go to the school to pick up Lucian since he tried to... Eh? He lured Ernest down to the cellar with the promise of a fine vintage and then tried to brick him in in into the wall, right? How did you know that? Has everyone read this story except for me? <laughs> Lucian livestreamed the entire thing. This mother... <laughs> oh my god! Lucian! This entire day is beyond me. But otherwise, it was a fun day. That Damien guy is a character, but he's really good company and a surprisingly diplomatic dad. Huh. I dig his style. You know what? Me too. Ooh, day complete! Ah! I'm Ooh! sensing a romance between us. <gasps> a <sighs> chemical romance. That's a band? <laughs> You're so cute! Oh. Okay. Yes! 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 <laughs> yes! My heart is burning on. Just like a match you strike to incinerate. <laughs> I love that so much. S, rank S. Yes, of course. Of course our date was a complete success with S. Rank, thank you. <laughs> Of course. While I'm doing my afternoon word jumbles, I hear the mail truck pull through the cul pull through the, the cul-de-sac. I wonder if we got in any coupons today. The nice mail person slides a couple letters and a large yellow envelope through through the slot. It takes a couple of tries for them to get it in. Hey, my coupons! I take a closer look at the large yellow envelope. Hmm. I lightly knock on Amanda's door. She probably has headphones on. <clears throat> Amanda? She yells through the door. What? I have something for you. I'm kind of busy right now. Can you come back later? Okay. Just thought you'd want this big old envelope we got from HIA. Hey. Immediately, Amanda pushes her door open. <laughs> Horn Institute for the Arts? I mean, if you're busy, I I, I can come back. Got uh, Father, please. I hand her the, um, the envelope, which she tears open with her teeth. That's probably bad for your teeth. She doesn't seem to hear me and spits out a piece of the envelope. She pulls out a letter and unfolds it. Huh. And? The suspense is killing me. This is her dream school. Amanda's face is unreadable. Hmm. I can't believe this. Oh, honey. It's okay if you didn't. Yeah. I got in. Oh, I got in. Amanda tosses the letter aside and gives me a big hug. Congrats, sweetie. That's amazing. I'm so proud of you. Oh. She pulls away and looks at the letter again. Oh, my God. I can't. I really can't believe I got in. Well, of course you got in. You're a great student. You nailed that interview and your photography is incredible. Oh. Wait, Dad, uh, I know this one's really expensive and it's so far away. I think for a moment. HIA was one of the more expensive schools that Amanda applied to, but I know she's had her heart, s her heart set on it for the longest time. It'll be tough, but we're going to make it work. Huh? Really? Of course. Amanda hugs me again. Yes. Thanks, Dad. Okay, sweetie, we're celebrating. We're celebrating tonight. Dinner, your choice, wherever you want. <laughs> wherever. Amanda and I walk along the bayside, tearing into our foil-wrapped burritos from a nearby food truck. You could have chosen anywhere in Maple Bay. Cost was not a determining factor. 
Please, Dad, you know I'm a simple gal. Just give me a Rito with a view. I can't say I'm mad. Amanda and I sit on a patch of grass and watch ships sail lazily through through the bay. At least she's simple. Sometimes less is just more. Just simple, keeping it easy, chill. You don't need anything super fancy. I like that about Amanda. She's just super chill. All right. And the dorms are right near a bunch of cafes, and there are all these galleries nearby, and there's a discount if you bring your student ID, and Amanda, slow down. You're, you're gonna choke on your burrito. I know, I'm just excited. Did I mention that students get their own studio space once they're seniors? And we get all the professional f a photo editing software for free? It's nice to see Amanda so en enthusiastic about HIA, but I wish she wouldn't do it between bites of her burrito. I thought I taught her to chew with her mouth closed. I wonder who my roommate's gonna be. You take a survey online and they match you with someone with a similar major and interests. I bet we're gonna be best friends. Craig and I were. A good roommate can be a lifelong friend. But don't even get me started on bad roommates. Mm. Oh no. I'm just kidding. We didn't have a bad roommate. Our only other roommate was a puppy that Craig brought home one night. We spent a semester fabricating a story about our new foreign exchange student who had a really bad cough that sounded exactly like a dog's bark. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> Carl ruled. Yes. Ooh, they let you have animals in the dorms if you get a note saying you need one. I bet I could forge one. I think I'd, I'd get a rabbit. Or maybe a snake. Or maybe both. Would the snake eat a rabbit, though? Oh, boy. I think I'll leave that... I'll leave all that up to you. <laughs> She's so excited. I don't want to disappoint her, but I need to be real for a second. So, you, you know I had that talk with Mr. Vega. Hmm. He didn't tell you about the dumpster fire, did he? What? No. Mm -hmm. I don't want to put a damper on, on the good news, but I need you to knock it out of the park these last few months of school, okay? If you really want to go to Horns, we need that scholarship money. I know you can do it. Huh. Okay. I promise I'll try harder. I pat her on the back. Think you can handle a 14-hour drive to come home for, th for the holidays? There's going to be some treacherous ice roads across. And don't even get me started on the paranormal occurrences. <laughs> well, it, it, it'll be worth it if I get to see you. My eyes immediately well up with tears. Oh, they're both crying. Oh, hmm. oh, dad, don't cry. Sorry, I'm just very, very proud of you. You're all grown up now and you're such a good person. And I hope you know how important you are to me. Dad, stop. You're, you're going to make me cry too. It's too late, honey. It's happening. <laughs> Dad, I can't get tears in my burrito. It's going to make it taste sad. I pull Amanda in for a hug and kiss her on the forehead. Love you, kiddo. Love you too, pops. Oh, that's so sweet. <laughs> but congrats to Amanda. Oh, yes. Ooh. Oh, Craig. Hi. Okay. Anyways, this is a good time to stop. <laughs> before it gets too invested. But oh my God, we had an amazing date with Damien and Amanda got into her school of choice. That's that's awesome. <laughs> but unfortunately it is time guys, but I'm gonna be focusing on Damien. That was so much fun. And I'm excited to see what more of Damien we get to see. <laughs> Anyways, hope you guys had an awesome day. Hope you enjoyed this playthrough. And I will see you in the next episode. Bye-bye.